you guys are never going to believe this, but the ATF just made another interpretive decision to threaten to put everyone in jail again. So ATF is at it again. What else is new? A great many people were anxiously awaiting the approval of their applications to make and register a suppressor, and they got denial letters from the ATF this week. It's a pretty weird situation, so let's dig into it and try to figure out what's going on. While the host of Fudbusters is a lawyer, he is not your lawyer. If you pay him, maybe, either way you slice it, the video that you are about to watch is not to be construed as legal advice. There's something so strange about waiting for a tax stamp to clear. You've paid up front, you've dotted your T's and crossed your I's, and you wait months for the government to tell you you can have your property. Still, strangely, most people wait with a little bit more excitement than indignation. That probably wasn't the case for the unknown hundreds or even thousands of people who were met with this bright red denial letter this week. Many are suggesting that ATF is taking a hyper-aggressive position here, that there's no way to make a suppressor without using regulated silencer parts. To make sense of this, let's take a few steps back. A Form 1 is what you file when you want to make an NFA firearm yourself. It is a notice of intent to make and register a firearm. You file it before making the item. For example, if you wanted to make an SBR, you'd wait for your form to be approved before putting a short upper on a rifle lower. You use the Form 1 to make a great many items, but the focus right now is on suppressors. It seems that everyone who had a pending form to make and register a new suppressor got this denial letter which read as follows. A silencer is defined under federal law to include, in relevant part, any combination of parts designed or redesigned and intended for use in assembling or fabricating a silencer, and any part intended only for use in such assembly or fabrication, parts that fall under this definition must comply with the NFA. The letter goes on to say that upon review of your Form 1 application, the part from which you intended to make a silencer already meets the NFA definition of silencer. The part was not registered nor transferred in compliance with the NFA, therefore your eForm 1 application to make a silencer is disapproved. NFA division notes that it is unlawful for you to possess a silencer made or transferred in violation of the NFA. The most fascinating thing here is that ATF is suggesting that they reviewed these applications to determine whatever parts the silencer was to be made from was already a silencer. There's an interesting thing about the Form 1 application up to this point, though, and that's the minor detail that it doesn't ask for any specifics of what you're going to make the suppressor out of. You pretty much just disclose the length and caliber. You could print it, cut it on a lathe, or make it from whatever else, at least up to now. It seems pretty obvious, though, that ATF is targeting silencers made from solvent trap kits. Now, solvent traps are closed containers that screw onto the end of your barrel and can catch whatever goop you spray down your bore to clean up. These are unironically useful, especially to those of us who shoot corrosive ammunition and don't want to get brake cleaner or whatever horrible chemical we're using that day all over the place. So ATF is suggesting here that any parts you might make a suppressor from are already a suppressor the moment you want to make a suppressor. Let's look at the language of the law and see if we can't give this a nice big think. So in the NFA, which cross-references the definition of silencer to the Gun Control Act, we find the definition. The term silencer means any device for silencing, muffling, or diminishing the report of a portable firearm, including any combination of parts designed or redesigned and intended for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer, and any part intended only for use in such assembly or fabrication. So yeah, this is some pretty crummy language. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually some of the most wriggly language that we see in the definitions, either the NFA or GCA. So let's dive into the different areas here. There is first the actual suppressor, the device which makes a portable gun quieter. Next, there's any combination of parts which is designed or has been redesigned and is intended for use in assembling or fabricating a silencer, 
And finally, any one individual part whose only intended use is for the assembly or manufacture of a suppressor. So what are solvent traps then? Well, they aren't parts whose sole and only intended use is to make a suppressor, as anyone who likes a mess-free bore blast after shooting corrosive ammo can tell you. They also don't diminish the report of a firearm. In fact, if you try to fire through it, you will likely have a bad time. So the question is, do they fit in that middle category? This is a huge problem with the way the law was drafted with regards to suppressors, as other references to this type of language are not so wriggly. This one really is written like trash. The question is, is a solvent trap a combination of parts which is designed not solely but designed for the assembly or fabrication of a suppressor, plus do you intend to use it to fabricate a suppressor? I can see arguments going both ways here, but I think it's clear the way this law is drafted is total nonsense, and it's caused problems for many years, with some ATF field offices trying to get manufacturers to serialize, like, baffles and things. Now, I did some digging, and I found that QuietBore, a solvent trap company, had posted what they alleged to be a conversation with an ATF representative regarding these changes. Now, QuietBoard took these off of its Facebook page, so we can't be completely sure these are legit. But hey, they posted online, so there there got to be something there, right? Anyway, as we check out this email exchange, there is what is purported to be an ATF agent saying that all pending silencer form 1s were purged because ATF decided that solvent trap kits were themselves suppressors. Now, according to this email chain, which again is suspect, we should expect ATF to publish some guidance in the coming days, and that there will apparently be a new Form 1 guidance where ATF will ask you to explain how you plan to make your suppressor. It appears from the chain, and would be consistent with ATF's new interpretation, that the only way to build a Form 1 can would be to hand fabricate all the parts by yourself, either on a lathe or with a 3D printer. It's kind of entertaining that the agent here goes as far as to say that a piece of conduit once chopped to a matter of inches from a six-foot section would be a suppressor under this new ideation. But he does, you know, give us the solace that when we buy the whole pipe, right? Oh, well, we don't have to worry about that. So that seems to be the thrust of the ATF's argument. ATF is going to the bitter edge of a poorly worded section to say that anything that could be a suppressor part or a presuppressor part is a suppressor. Now, what kind of boggles the mind here is that ATF is eliminating a class of products that were used by people who went and registered the items. These people all even put up hundreds of dollars to pay a registration tax. I don't understand what public safety purpose there could be to this new move. Frankly, I think the most direct and best course of action for us gun owners here is to tell our federal reptiles to get rid of this dumb law while they're at it like the rest of the NFA, pretty please. This new interpretation may not be the most linguistically suspect one the government has pulled in recent memory, but it is certainly devoid of purpose, unless the purpose is to drive up the cost and complexity of lawful suppressor ownership and manufacture. This interpretation will eliminate the economies of scale afforded by companies who focus on individual component parts of suppressors, who then work together to bring affordable suppressors to market by finishing them up in-house. Now, many people don't know this, but the addition of suppressors to the NFA was never properly debated. They were just kind of unceremoniously added to the bill without much pomp or circumstance. Of course, we know now that suppressors are, frankly, pretty nice dudes, and we're also, embarrassingly, one of the only gun-owning countries that treat them with such suspicion. I wish I had better news for you guys, but this is how it looks from where I'm sitting. With that, thank you all so much for watching until the end. If you like this content and want to support it, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to do more than that, I'm on Utreon, Patreon, Subscribestar, and I have affiliate links down below. Everything helps massively. It's super humbling. Until next time, y'all take care.